So everybody, thank you so much uh, for being here today. Very excited for us to be able to kick off the October elevator pitch. And elevator pitch is um, meant for us to be able to get a presentation to get the elevator pitch of three great companies. We've got Avic, Lumu, and Secure Payments here today. And um, we've, got, uh, we've got Frank, Nolan, Howe, and Mike Livingston. Um, welcome everybody. Welcome. There's yeah, we've got we've got some handshakes there. Awesome, love it. Um, so I'm going to introduce you guys in just one moment, but I wanted to just mention everybody a couple things here. So uh, what's going to happen is each of our presenters will have 10 minutes to give their elevator pitch, and what will happen is uh, once each of them are completed, we will open up our demo rooms, and basically within our demo rooms, you'll be able to see some hands-on learning, but more importantly, any kind of uh, questions and answers that you have to be able to uh, be answered. And um, so our goal with this event is to educate you about different products and services that can help you um, be more profitable, more efficient, deliver a better customer experience for your clients. And uh, so take advantage of uh, this learning opportunity, especially in those demo rooms to answer um, your, or ask any of those questions that you might have. Um, what's gonna happen is once all the presentations are done, I'm gonna throw a poll up asking who of the three vendors you'd like to hear from. And uh, so just go ahead and complete that so that they know to reach out to you uh, with any kind of interest that you have. Um, additionally, most exciting thing is we have $250 of cash for you so one lucky person who stays all the way to the end, so make sure you're present to win, will win $250 cash. And who, who doesn't want $250, right? And uh, so we will be doing that as well. Now, um, if you do have any questions, um, we won't be answering them in during the presentations. Wait till the time for our demo rooms and uh, we'll be able to get all those answered for you. Uh, when we do open up the demo rooms, I'll talk a little bit more about that, how you get into the demo rooms. You'll be able to, you know, jump into Avic, for example. Uh, maybe you want to jump over to Secure Payments and then Lumu. You'll have the ability to bounce around and go to whichever demo room that you would like. And um, so with that being said, um, we are going to do this in alphabetical order of companies. So drum roll, we've got Avic up first. And... Uh, Nolan, you are uh, you are you are first in line. How are you doing today, uh, Nolan? Doing great, Dan. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So, um, can you give us a little bit of background of your your role at Avic? How long you've been there, and so on? Absolutely. So, I'm a product marketing manager at Avic, covering the Avic network management solution. I am approaching one year. Uh, with Avic, but I uh, have been in the enterprise B2B tech space for over 12 years, and in the networking space for uh, the majority of that time. Awesome. So um, as always in, in Dan fashion, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, what is something about you, about Nolan, that most people might not know? Oh, wow. Um, so um, I'm an avid traveler. I'm actually uh, in transit right now. I'm in a co-working space in New York City on my way to South America. Oh, wow. Nice. That is true traveling. So that's awesome. Um, so why don't we kick it off? We'll go ahead and I'll start the timer. You have 10 minutes. You can go ahead and uh, share your presentation and uh, it's all yours. Great. Thanks, Dan. Just give a second. I'll get in slideshow mode. And yeah, I, re I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all today um, about Avic Network Management. And uh, you know, this kind of introduce Avic as a company and particularly our network management solution. Um, we abide by this ethos when it, when it comes to our MSP customers and users, and it's, you know, their networks are everywhere work happens and control it all faster and easier with Avic. And, you know, with the increase in remote work, work's not happening just at the office. It's not just happening at the home office. It can be in a co-working space like where I am. It can be in line at the bank at a hotel, you know, even on a park bench, you know, if, if you have that, that connectivity. And so the perimeter of the network, like the, the, boundaries of the network are limitless and administrators need to be able to visualize it like that and, and, and be able to control everything that's happening within those bounds. So that's what we really um, aim to do for our customers at Avic. We provide a cloud-based network, 
manufacturing solution that's very fast and easy to deploy. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second and very easy to use. You don't have to be a, a really seasoned network administrator to really go deep with Ovid and ramp up quickly. You can be a, a new hire to the field, someone who's coming over from another area of technology. We've really created a um, intuitive GUI to, to, to help people be able to on-ramp and up-ramp faster. Um, you know, one thing I love here is this saying that we love the speed at which Ovid can reveal the true state of the network. And, and we'll show you a bit what we, we mean by that. Um, and, and of course, we've been around since 2011. We're a Canadian-based company. And you know, we're, we're uh, definitely uh, you know, growing in lockstep with our customers. So before I get into Ovid network management specifically, uh, we are a multi-product company. The network management is our bread and butter, what we've been doing since the beginning. But we have added SaaS management, which is a similar a value proposition in terms of visualizing and optimizing the SaaS ecosystem, just like you would the network infrastructure ecosystem. And we have the MetaGeek suite of Wi-Fi management tools to do some more advanced day-to-day -day management and troubleshooting with Wi-Fi. Um, so what does Avic do at its core? Um, Avic is, like I said, a cloud-based network management solution. And the first thing we do is automate network discovery uh, for your for your end clients. Um, all it takes to get started with Avic is to deploy a software collector, and that discovers every device, every switch, router, firewall, access point, wireless controller on the network, and it, it does this generally in, in 10 minutes. Um, and not only do we discover you know, all these devices on the network, we really get deep into like what's going on behind the scenes with them. We provide a live searchable inventory of all these devices, we show things uh, like different types of lifecycle information, um, serial numbers, that, that type of data. Um, but also uh, a really important thing we do is provide um, ongoing configuration backup. And so um, you have a, a really complete history of device configurations. You can compare at any two points in time. And if something bad happens on, on one of the networks that you're managing, it happens to go down, you can copy and paste that most recent config and bring the network back up pretty quickly. Um, the next part of Audix value proposition is to reduce network troubleshooting time. With our automated discovery and, and deep ability to go into the devices, uh, we do have a lot of data. We have nearly 60 out of the box alerts to let you know when there are various types of, of problems. And it can be something informational, like oh, you might want to look into this, or it can be something like this is critical, this will negatively impact service if it's not addressed immediately. And you know, in addition to the alerts, we provide full device history, uh, deep syslog data, NetFlow data to get to prepare your technicians with everything they need to find the problem quickly and resolve it quickly. No, no having to um, manually come through devices to try to find the problem. You know, we take all the guesswork out of that. And um, you know, we're we're we play well with other solutions. We're part of the ITSM ecosystem, so we integrate with a lot of the more common ITSM tools and other alerting tools, uh, similar with inventory and reporting. And, and one thing we mentioned, the alerts, um, we, we integrate with collaboration tools so that your technicians can know quickly when there is a problem through their channel of choice and, and they can start to troubleshoot that right away. Um, uh, one thing I, uh, I don't think I mentioned, but um, Avic identifies over 15,000 devices from over 700 vendors. And this seems like a pretty straightforward kind of logo eye chart slide, but I actually uh, intend to be a little cheeky with this. Um, one thing that Avic does really well is identify old devices. And you see some vendors on this chart that don't really exist anymore. They've been acquired, they've merged with others, um, you know, their brands have evolved. Um, we can go quite far back in time in terms of our device identification capabilities because we know that networks are a mix of legacy equipment, next-gen equipment, and we want to eliminate those visibility gaps, help everything work better together. And I can't believe I'm already at the end, um, but um, uh, here's uh, let everyone know there's a $25 gift card to the Avic Swag Store. We've got some really cool stuff, a lot of cool uh, polar bears. And we hope to see you in the demo. Awesome. So um, before I let you go, I, I do want to ask a few questions. Uh, so when you take a look at Avic, are you finding that most MSPs are using it strictly with their clients 
or are they also using it from a pre-sales perspective during, you know, an assessment? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I've definitely seen Avic serve in that way. Um, you know, you know, from a menu of options, but also the network assessment to show you know, where your network is and how Avic can can help close any gaps that you might have. That's us. Excellent. And um, you know, another another question I have for you is in regards to um, troubleshooting and reducing the time to be able to troubleshoot. Time is always of the essence. You know, when Absolutely. a client has an issue, we need to act fast. So um, can you give just a, a, a brief overview of how that tool will allow you to pinpoint where there might be an issue in a network? So the, the tool shows you what device, you know, what, what device might be down or might have an anomaly to look into. Um, the, the, the alerting is very pinpointed and, you know, like I said, it can be delivered directly to Slack or Teams. Um, and of course, natively within the Avic app. So um, by you don't know there's a just a switch issue. You know what switch is on, and you can dig into that switch and, and find the context for for where that problem may be coming from. Excellent. And um, I, I love that you've added the new um, the the new SaaS capability to be able to um, identify. Can you give uh, you know maybe a, a 30, 60 second uh, overview? That's a little bit deeper on that. Oh, sure. So, you know, the problem we're trying to solve with both AM and, and software and SaaS management is shadow IT. Um, with the SaaS explosion, you have all kinds of apps that are coming from corporate, that are coming from individuals who figured out how to download this app onto your network. Um, and you just really need to know what's there, prevent any kind of outsider security threats. Also know like what you're spending money on because these SaaS licenses aren't um, they're, they're not cheap. So you, you want to make sure you're not duplicating any kinds of applications, um, that, you're, that your spend is optimized, and that, you know, shadow IT isn't necessarily good or, good or bad, but you need to know what's out there so you can manage it and secure it properly. And I, I'd say this, like, there's a parallel with Avic Network Management is that we show you, you know, things like routers and, and switches that might be rogue and, you know, provide you that visibility so you know okay, this is something on my network I need to secure that we need to manage or decide if it belongs here. Awesome. And yeah, I think I think that is such a critical component because when you think about shadow IT, um, end users, you know, are, are just trying to do their job better. So they're, you know, Absolutely. they're not intending to do anything malicious, but, they, you know, there is the security aspect, but also just the redundancy from a cost perspective. Um, you know, you take, just look at Office 365 in general, um, that is such a uh, a very deep product that you know that most are only scratching the surface of it, and often someone's um, you know signing up for you know this tool that you you already have with like a, a product like 365, and you might not be aware of that you know that you have got duplicate spend there. So uh, that is awesome. So uh, Nolan, thank you so much. And um, thank you. If anybody else has more questions, we will go ahead and. Um, You'll be able to answer those or ask them uh, in our demo rooms in just a little bit. So we're going to move on. And um, next up is Lumu. Now, Lumu is, uh, uh, you know, a, a newer name for us in our in our MSP community, our Everything MSP community. They're a new sponsor of Everything MSP. So we uh, we greatly thank you for uh, helping our community and participating in it. And so we have um, right now we've got Mike Livingston who is up with Lumu. And uh, Mike, can you give us um, you know, a little background of yourself and your role at Lumu? Absolutely. So I'm Mike Livingston. I'm Director of Channel Management with Lumu Technologies. So I'm responsible and my team is responsible for all things MSP and partners. And awesome. I've been with Lumu, like Nolan, um, just under a year. And my background is I've run uh, IT operations, cybersecurity for MSPs, uh, large corporations. So I have a pretty diverse background um, that allows us to have an inter interesting perspective within cyber. Awesome. So uh, just like I asked Nolan, um, you know, what is, what's one thing about you that, uh, you know, most people might not know? Um, well, most people know I'm an avid cyclist, but I also own a bike company. Uh, oh, wow. And Almost 50% of our profits go to supporting youth cycling in the Southeast. So I've been sponsoring, you know, youth 
cycling now for about 15 years. So we're really proud of that. That's awesome. I love that contribution back to the community as well. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, kick things off. You can share your screen if you have uh, a deck there and uh, we will start the timer. Getting slideshow here and then we will go. There we go. And we've got uh, Lumu, go ahead and I uh, kick the timer off. You got 10 minutes. Okay, just wanna make sure you can see the screen. Yes, yep, thank you. Fantastic. So Lumo for MSPs. Um, like I mentioned, my team is responsible for all things MSPs. And what we do for MSPs is we illuminate threats and adversaries in the network. But more importantly, we automate this. In real time, we identify threats. And then also in real time, we automate a response with our MSP partner clients' existing tools. So this is very critical. And what we believe that all MSPs can operate cybersecurity proficiently with us. Um, as Dan mentioned, um, we're new to the Everything MSP family and we're very proud of it. Um, we're a young company. We've only been around uh, three years now, but this previous year, we got a lot of recognition with our peers and in industry. So we're very proud of this. And our work that we've been doing with our MSP partners has uh, allowed us, and most recently, this is new news, uh, we got our Series B funding, so we're really proud of that. Continue to grow the, uh, our product and solutions that the MSP partners are asking for. Again, most important, what we do is we align RMSP's client cybersecurity stack to be together. To, to be on the same page. So everyone has a firewall, some type of endpoint, of course, email, which is the biggest threat factor, and some security around that. And Lumu brings that and syncs a orchestrated response when we identify a threat. Um, so this is our process, real high level. With intention, all we do is look for malicious contacts, within the network. If it's calling out IP URLs, we're gonna ingest that metadata for DNS, for syslog, email data. We call it our illumination process. It allows us to pull out for our partners, all of those bad actors, those domain IOCs, those IP IOCs, those hash IOCs, and then within seconds, be able to coordinate a response with our MSP partners, clients, existing investment in their tools within seconds. The firewall level, the endpoint level. And what makes that possible is our integration partnerships. So pretty much the leading edge technologies, the mainstays in the industries were able to ingest that data, which is critical, right? We think everything network is the ultimate truth. So we're gonna identify when those bad actors are touching your client's network and calling out. We identify that through our process. And then more importantly, is our automated response, being able to take your current investment and sync a response instantly. So response integrations. And for our MSPs who continue to grow their, their business and their throughput, this is a common integrations that we see. Uh, on the firewall level, you know, you have Fortinets, Meraki, SonicWalls, WatchGuard, Sophos, PFSense. At the endpoint level, Sentinel One, CrowdStrike, you know, all the usual players that our MSP partners need to have integrations with. Again, with email, um, 365, we're announcing next month, being able to help with Google. So we're very proud of that. But more importantly is that efficiency of having the integrations as well with the PSAs. So now the analysts 
they're getting a ticket motion out of our portal into their motion. So very critical for, for efficiency. Again, reason Forrester gave us high praise is how we identify threats and we pass that information about everything we've done around that response. So this is what an analyst would see within their ticket. If it was a ConnectWise ticket, auto task ticket, they'd see the threat identified, the automatic response occurred, you know, victim one, first endpoint, very quick here, 124 milliseconds, we identified this threat. On the operational timeline here, within 1609.41, 1609.54, so under 14 seconds, we are able to orchestrate a response with your client's tools, right? Making them have a synchronized response together. I always say get we're better together, same with our tools that we've invested in. And high level value that for MSPs that we work with is again, efficiency and operations, having low alert rates, having these skilled engineers be billable on project work, not chasing alerts. Tremendous efficiency here. The automated attack response, right? They're asleep at night. We're ingesting 24 7, 365, and we're coordinating this round, the response for them. You know, again, having the detailed context for post analysis is so critical. And then, of course, more, more, more visibility. Being able to see attacks across your entire networks, cross visibility on roaming users, IoT, OT devices, very critical and you know, uh, big gap for our MSP partners. And again, with our integrations, seamless deployment is so critical around efficiency and delivering cybersecurity. So again, I appreciate everyone's time and look forward to talking to folks in the demo room and see how uh, Lumu might fit in their uh, in their stack. Mike, that's awesome. Appreciate your time. And um, you know, I think when we take a look at uh, you know the overall security landscape, um, MSPs need to continue to invest more into security tools that will protect their clients, but also protect them. Um, as a provider, and uh, you know, it, it, would it be a safe assumption that you're a good fit for both those growing MSPs, those that might not have a lot of talent? You know, maybe um, you know they're they're smaller, three, four, five uh, technicians, um, but also for those that are you know maybe much more mature and and have more disciplined roles. Would you um, would you say that you're a good fit all the way across the board? Yeah, absolutely. We fit many use cases for our partners where they have a small team. And they need to really look at and utilize automation because they just don't have the bandwidth, right? They don't have the bandwidth to be always looking at the alerts or even understanding, hey, what do I do when I identify a threat? So, and then our larger partners, right, really add efficiency and allow them to, uh, you know, be available for billable work, right? Have more revenue driving work instead of having the skilled engineers looking at or making firewall changes or, you know, sysadmins looking at domains. So a lot of efficiency in how they deliver cyber within their program. Yeah, so it, it's really um, providing peace of mind, of course, not only for the client, but for the MSP itself, yeah, as you of mentioned. Course. You know, being able to have those operations um, running 24-7 uh, of course, we, you know, most MSPs don't have uh, the staff to, to operate 24-7. Yep. So to be able to have that extension of the team is uh, rock solid. That's great. Yep. Awesome. Mike, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Of course, it. we appreciate uh, everyone's time and look forward to have continuing the discussion. Excellent. We're going to uh, move on to our next speaker. We've got uh, Frank. Frank, I'm going to... Um, 
I, I know I'm going to butcher your last name. I mean, so a guy with the last name of Tomaszewski should, you know, you would think would be able to pronounce any name that's out there. But can you, um, you know, can you pronounce your last name for me? I was going to say, I'll, I'll butcher your name if you butcher mine. So uh, it's, it's D. Benedetto. <laughs> It's not as uh, bad as it as it looks. It's just a lot of ease in there. So there we go. D. Benedetto. That's awesome. Uh, Mike, you are with Secure Payments. And um, so happy to have you here. If you could give a little background about you and your role um, with Secure Payments. Yeah. So I actually uh, I founded Audit a Sales Presentation System and I uh, sold that to Kaseya and uh, we built nice. uh, Secure Payments brand new um, uh, from uh, Kaseya Stack. So I've been there for probably about two and a half years now. And uh, I actually, um, I had an MSP as well, which will figure into my story. I uh, sold that uh, this July, but uh, I oh, greatly, nice. greatly enjoyed my uh, my 15 year run as being an MSP. Yeah. So I, uh, I know what it's like to be on both sides. Yeah, it, I, you have a full head of hair. So you, you know, you survived well, you know, unlike, you know, me here <laughs> and, uh, or Mike. Yeah, definitely. So uh, one one interesting thing about uh, Frank that we should know about. Um, I was uh, actually a, an extra on an episode of The uh, Profit with Marcus Limonis uh, a couple of years oh, ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Did you get a I, chance to meet Marcus then? I did, yeah. My my friend actually invested in uh, the product that they were spotlighting. And so we went, I was in Florida, we went there. And next thing I know, that was signing a release. And uh, I didn't have a speaking spot, but I was in the enough in the episode that a buddy of mine called me while I was on vacation in Arizona. And he's like, did I just see you on TV? So uh, anyway, fun fact. That's awesome. Uh, I, I'm a, a big fan of Marcus and uh, <laughs> uh, I've always loved watching his show. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and kick things off. You can go ahead and share um, your screen, your slide deck. And uh, then what I'll do is go ahead and start the timer. Alrighty. And 10 minutes starts now. Ready? <clears throat> see if you can see my screen. Cool. Yep. Alrighty. So we went through the intro here. Um, so we'll skip right into it. <clears throat> so I want to tell you a quick story. Um, my MSP was called Two River Technology Group. It's located in uh, central Jersey. I had that for about 15 years. But back in 2021, I got a call from one of my clients, uh, Navison Country Club, and they thought they might have suffered a, a credit card processing breach. So they asked me to come in and uh, meet with them and, and the, the merchant processor to discuss their cybersecurity. And before we hung up, <clears throat> the first question they asked me is they said, don't you handle our PCI compliance? And I got this like sinking feeling. Um, as an MSP, I never like getting called to the customer. I like to be the one that goes to meet with the customer usually as a business review. So uh, and I also learned that compliance is, um, is is subjective, right? Certain areas are black and white, others aren't. So uh, I kind of had an idea of what I was heading into, um, but didn't know uh, all the details at that point. Um, for anybody who's, who's wondering, you know, PCI compliance basically just says that um, there's about 12 things that you need to maintain um, if your customer um, is accepting electronic payments like credit cards or ACH. Um, we can see here that these 12 things, a bunch of them fall well within the purview of what an MSP would do. So firewalls, uh, password, AV, segmenting the network, updating and patching software. There's no way that an MSP is not going to get drawn into this conversation. And that's the very reason that Two River Tech got pulled in. So as it turned out, after we a full investigation, it had nothing to do with anything that I did. It uh, wasn't the network, wasn't anything that had to do with passwords. I actually had to do uh, with the merchant processor, there's some hardware there, you know, the tap and swipe machine in the um, in the um, uh, pro shop. And someone went in, made some fraudulent charges, and uh, because the the hardware was end of life, so I got a little bit of a sense of relief. Uh, okay, it wasn't my fault, but it kind of felt like you know maybe I'd be held responsible. It turned out that um, they were uh, held responsible for those charges because they were deemed to not be PCI compliant. So of course, I was super interested in learning why that was. And I found something out that merchant processors actually will allow you to operate in a non-compliant way as long as they're charging a fee. And this is the actual statement from Navison Country Club. It says right here, PCI non-compliance fee, $25 per month they were paying to be non-compliant. I had no idea about it. Neither did the customer. Yet, because they were non-compliant, they were subject to uh, those charges. So what we found was that the merchant process was a huge PCI blind spot for MSPs. 
Um, I didn't even know who Navis and Country Club used. And in fact, when I really looked at it, I had 92 customers. I couldn't even tell you which ones definitively took credit cards or electronic payments. So how could I guarantee that they were PCI compliant or not? So today what we found is that about 61% of an MSP's customer base accepts electronic payments. That's up um, from about 55% a couple of years ago, driven mainly because of the, uh, through, through and during the pandemic, a lot more uh, businesses wanted to transact electronically instead of you know dealing with paper checks running to the bank, et cetera. That also means that 61% of, of an MSP's customers are going to be subject to PCI compliance. We found when we we're analyzing these statements that 73% of them were not eye opening. So when we looked at it, um, we found probably, um, we went through probably a couple thousand in our pilot of this program. Um, here's another example of a statement. This one's pretty interesting. They actually charge you $89 on this one for a network security and compliance fee. And they turn around and they hit you for $70 down at the bottom there because you're not compliant. Uh, many of my customers were in uh, the financial services world, and FINRA doesn't allow you to operate non-compliantly. But yet, if you're accepting electronic payments, such as credit cards or ACH, uh, you apparently can do so. Right? Um, so one thing I found, too, was 100% of my customers were unaware of these non-compliance fees. Because if they were, they would have said something about it or tried to figure out why they were non-compliant. So what's at stake for the client? Well, number one, the processor has notified the client. Now, whether or not they look at these statements, that's your customer's problem, right? But they say, they, it's right there in black and white. And it says that you're non-compliant. They're paying that fee, which means they're accepting liability. So in, in Madison Country Club's case, they're accepting the liability for potential uh, breach or fraudulent charges. And the last one is a big one. The client's likely violated their cyber liability insurance policy. So why is that? Well. One thing that I know is that just about every one of my customers who had cyber liability insurance had to answer on there, were we PCI compliant? And they check it off um, many times with the help of the MSP. Yet here we are in black and white stating that you're not PCI compliant. And there's a few other examples. Pretty much every single application we, we looked at, people checked that off. So here's an interesting case. Travelers in 2022 wanted out of a claim with one of their insurers. And uh, the insured got ransomware, they filed a claim. They had said that they were using multi-factor authentication. When travelers looked into it, they found that in fact, they weren't using MFA. And so they said, hey, that's an, a, a misrepresentation and omission that would have led us to not issue a policy to that insured. So because of that fact, we shouldn't be party to the, um, the claim that was filed. And they actually won the suit. So that's pretty huge. So that means 73% of an MSP's customers potentially could have their claims invalidated on a cyber liability insurance solely because they're not PCI compliant. This is the main reason we launched Secure Payments, right? So quite simply, Secure Payments is there to, to protect your clients and MSPs and to secure them in 60 days or less. So how do we do that? Well, we built an entire team of what we call concierge, the analyst team in New Jersey. That team pretty much does all the work on behalf of the MSP. The only thing the MSP has to do is they have to export their client list. We take that client list and we import that into a custom built portal that we have. This is the portal that we interact at with. We can see which of the customers actually take credit cards. Um, we can see uh, uh, which ones are secure or not secure. Second thing the MSP does is we provide them with a template and they send that email out to their customer base. You'd be, you could feel free to modify or use it in its current form. But basically what this email says is, hey, what we've done as the MSP is we've hired secure payments on our behalf to reach out to you to, to make sure that you're PCI compliance. It's, it's super important that we know we want to reduce any risk. There's no cost to you, Mr. Customer. That goes out. Afterwards, our team schedules a 15-minute assessment. We come back with an audit-style report that's color-coded, scored, and easy to understand, and we let them know whether or not they're secure. And if they're not, we work with them to help secure them. So how do we secure them? Well, we can do it in one of two ways. The first way, quite simply, we just work with their existing merchant provider. We figure out why they're paying a non-compliance fee, and we help them get that fee removed. And um, then we work with them each year, right, on an annual basis to make sure that they stay compliant. So we will continue to revisit that. 
The second thing we can do is actually migrate them to a secure payments gateway. So we have a gateway product um, that can replace whatever their current solution is. So basically, <clears throat> there's an opportunity to earn revenue here. If the customer switches over to our secure gateway, we generate fees. It's what drives the entire fintech industry. So in this case, on a $100 check at, the, at, a, at someplace for dinner, what you'll find is 50 cents of that goes um, to the payment processor. We're able to rebate a portion of that back to the MSP. We find 90% of the MSPs in this program, they break even after about nine to 12 months. There's also an opportunity to gain new customers. Um, I myself added two new logos um, over a six month period of time that I use this. I'm always looking for a unique way to get my foot in the door with a prospect. What I started to do is in addition to assessing all the normal things that we do, I would ask them for a copy of their credit card processing statements. 73% chance that they're not going to be compliant. When I found that, I would come back with those results and I'd make a big deal. And I'd say, I can't believe your current MSP is not handling this for you. Do you understand the implications that your cyber liability insurance could be violated? And so it was a great way to, to wedge out the other MSP and to win some business. So wrapping up here, we're here, number one, to mitigate that risk of PCI noncompliance, helping to retain your existing customers, help you gain new customers, and through the rebated fees, it's a nice way to generate a passive revenue stream. So this is a big announcement um, at DattoCon by Fred Bacol, the CEO of Kaseya. Um, this program is only $400 a month. It's, an, it's a no-brainer, especially when you consider the fact that after about nine to 12 months, those fees will more than cover what the cost to be in the program is. I'm gonna hold over the DattoCon discount um, until the end of this month for anybody on this webinar here. It's $299 per month. Uh, we actually have five spots left for October. Uh, we brought so much business in and because this is, this is resource intensive for us, we have five left. So if you wanna skip to the head of the line instead of shooting a QR code there, uh, feel free to email me directly and I'll walk you to the front of the line. Uh, so that's what I have for you, Dan. Um, and I look forward to seeing uh, anybody who's interested inside of the breakout room. That is awesome. I appreciate that. And, you know, when you think about, um, uh, you know, credit card processing, you know, I think that is an area that's often overlooked unless, you know, a client, you know, maybe it's a retail client where, you know, they've got hardware connected to a POS and, you know, it's more obvious that you're getting involved and so on. And uh, but yet there is that liability and that protection for a client that, you know, uh, they count on us to have their back. Um, so I, I love that this is just not only a great tool for us to be able to ensure that they are compliant, but it also gives you that capability of being able to earn some additional revenue. So it's uh, kind of twofold, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So that. Um, uh, that is secure payments. Thank you so much for that. And